Coach Lem, welcome. Congratulations uh, on, on the call up. Uh, I'll, I'll piggyback. What did you learn from last year's experience working with this unit? And how can you help them improve and gain a better identity as an offensive line? Hmm. First question, how, how what I learned. Um, I got a good group. I mean, they were good uh, last year as well. I think one thing how me is character. We got a high character group, work hard, a lot of questions, all that stuff. I mean, even now they contact me on the weekends, ask more questions, just trying to learn. And that goes kind of to your second question where me just trying to give them more information in terms of understanding football as a whole. Uh, it helped me out a lot when you just understand more than just block the end and things like that. So help them their techniques and the reasons of why's and things like that. We'll go to Alan followed by Barry. Uh, hi, Lam, congratulations as Omar said. Um, why do you feel Robert Hunt might be better suited to play guard than tackle? Um, Robert doesn't have a spot like quite yet. You know, we're all out there competing for sure. Um, like I said, it was a group, they're young and they're versatile for sure. Um, Rob has a, he's a powerful man. Just like we said, when you write him up, you hear about him, like you saw him in college being able to move people. He can move people at tackle. He can move people at guard. So where he is right now, I can't tell you. Uh, but, you know, week one, we'll be able to see where everybody falls. Hi, Lem. Congratulations. Want to ask you about Austin Jackson and Matt Skura. What do you think Matt, first of all, is going to give you? And then Austin, he never seemed overwhelmed at all last year. Did, did that give you encouragement that he can build on that and become a really good player in year two? Uh, Matt, what he brings, I mean, experience, first off. Uh, another thing I look for was in talking about character, grit, you know, going through what he's gone through, being the guy, uh, I believe, undrafted, you know, working his way in the league and doing things like that. I mean, I, I hold that character very high. And then just kind of our line, our group, how we're trying to mesh as, as, as a unit, not only on the field, but off the field. He can kind of bring that aspect of being somewhere else and giving that advice like that. But he's coming just, you know, working great, asking questions. You know, he's been playing, like I said, everybody's playing multiple positions, so he's not flinching at that. So I think that's really great about Matt. He's just a great guy. Uh, Austin, AJ, as we all call him. Once again, I mean, I, I was really high on his character. You know, when I, when I look up guys, you know, I Google look to the media in terms of how they, you know, do their interviews and things that happen in their personal life. So his character and things he's went through and just on that level is very high to me. So that's why when he was faced with adversity or getting a start, he didn't flinch, I think, because it's deeper than football. And so uh, I, he's just excited. You know, he's been contacting me. We've been in close contact, had a great relationship, just building that with the, along with all the other guys. But that gives me very much so hope where even this weekend I'm contacting him, this morning I've seen him. We keep talking about ball. He's all in the ball for sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Adam? Hey, Lam, you guys had one of the youngest offensive lines in the NFL last year, and – you're not getting much older. Certainly you've added a rookie or, or you know, in the, in the second day of the draft. Uh, what are the challenges of coaching a young offensive line and what is the potential of this group? Uh, the challenges of coaching an offensive line, a young offensive line as a unit, as a whole. Um, like you said, the experience is, is, is a challenge, but they got to gain it. Sometimes you want to make sure you help them gain it, especially nowadays with so much technology available through other people's mis mistakes in film. Uh, on the field, put them in stressful situations to, to really simulate what they might go through. But um, I think with most lines, especially the issue is just really understanding football and different schemes and the reasons why. So just getting deeper in that will help out anybody because you can be a guy who's played five, six, seven, eight years, but all of a sudden a coach or a scheme can come in, all of a sudden you learn it, now you've also improved. So the, the reps, of course, you want to get them. And we're going to find many ways nowadays you have to, not only was on the field, but off the field, quizzing them, simulating it the best ways we can. Thanks. Yep. Omar? Lem, you're a former center. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you naturally played that position in college, but how easy is it or how difficult is it for a player like Michael Dieter to learn the position um, and then play it well? And how long does that process take? Um, Dieter, I believe, has played that position and snapped it. Even in Wisconsin, when he was playing, like a lot of coaches you talk to and you talk to players now, in college, they put him in situations just, just in case to snap back then. So like to play it fast, like you said, when I first started playing, I was actually a D lineman. And then they moved me to guard. And then I got to center like my last year in college. So there is that transition of, first off, getting the snap to the quarterback. Got to protect the football. So that's the first thing you got to be able to do at center. 
And so if you can't do that, you can't play in the first place. And then well, like, like the whole group, what I'm doing with them, I'm trying to help them all learn football. So if I say a scheme, wherever it might be, they should all be able to tell me what everybody's doing and putting the pressure on them to do it like that. But uh, Dieter, like last year, he had to be ready being the, the, that guy to play actually all inside three spots. And like you saw two years ago, he, he lined up at tackle. So, you know, if Dieter ends up being in that spot, I think he'll be ready for it. If not, I mean, we're training multiple guys to be able to play the center spot because in the game, if somebody gets hurt, you only have so many guys active. And if you can't snap the ball, you can't start to play. So we're working on that with everybody. The, uh, and to follow up on that question, you guys have a team or a unit where just about everybody, except with few exceptions, have, has played tackle or former tackle. Mm -hmm. um, what do you want? The, the line obviously has some size to it. What do you want this line's identity to be? Uh, funny, because I'm, I'm piggyback off of what Austin told you guys. You know, day one, one thing we did, we, we definitely made our um, our manual, our pamphlet, what we want. And you come out as, as a lineman, as a group, uh, trying to create that culture in the room, what you want. So they know I look for, you know, the toughness, being disciplined, being detailed and nasty. And I tell guys all, all the time, the difference between being dirty and nasty. So I'm not putting that out there in any type of way. But, you know, you want to be have your guys who get after it, who have a uh, tough mentality. You know, I tell guys the toughness isn't just – uh, being physically tough, but mentally tough, emotionally tough. There's definitely levels to this this game for sure. We'll go to Lewis. Hey, Coach Lem, uh, congratulations on the promotion. Uh, going back to the center position, when Matt was signed to the Dolphins, there was concern regarding last year's situation, and we wanted to, we wanted I wanted to know. What is going to be your approach to prevent that from becoming an issue in the future to make sure that doesn't happen anymore? Like, how are you going to, like, I don't know if it's a mental thing or if it's yeah. a mechanics thing, like, how are you going to approach him with that? Yeah. So like you said, going back to the center spot and because I played the center spot, uh, you, you it's like, you know, and I think it happens in golf, sometimes shooting, you got to know your rhythm and you got to first be able to identify the mistakes. So like, you know, he kind of talked to you guys, like linemen, linemen, we don't make excuses, you know. The difference between the excuse and the reason is very slight. I think it's just the person who's listening, how they take it. But and what we do, we just rep it. It has to be multiple reps over and over again in terms of like when we do drills, he's doing it. Pre-practice, he's doing it. Of course, during practice, he's doing it. Even after practice, you know, you want to do it. And you want to do it before it, it, something happens. So if you didn't feel right, even if you didn't have a, a, a good snap, you want to get more snaps anyway to, to be preventative, not reactive. So uh, if there's any issue, of course, because I played it, I'll be able to talk to them, try to see some things, because sometimes you want to move the ball a little more to the center of your nose, you might be off. Sometimes you have the ball a little more tilted up, which can affect the pendulum swing. So there's many things that could have affected him. But to this year so far, when he's been in there at center, he's been good. And like he said, I saw his interview, he's been snapping like crazy since, because that's the type of guy he is, where you know uh, he took that very personal. Another chip on the shoulder, like a lot of guys on the line are. So he's worked at it. And once again, I'll be preventative. And so will he where, you know what? We taught the quarterbacks, hey, did you get that snap good? Is it left? Is it right? Things like that. Our last question will be Kyle. Uh, good morning, Len. Congrats on the promotion. Uh, you've mentioned how engaged your players are right now to absorb as much information as they can. Uh, curious between your experience as both a player and a coach, uh, if you had any insights as to how rare or unique it is to have such an engaged group at this point in the off season. Yeah. Um, I was very fortunate in terms of playing. Like I was talking about, you know, I gotta make sure I give the shout out to the guy who kind of helped groom me, you know, Tom Cable and the whole line that we had in terms of how we started back when I played. And then even now where you see how important the communication and just the connect connectedness of the group is not only off the field, but on the field, because they'll push each other in terms of, A, quizzing each other, asking those questions, and understand, like, in the terms of O-line room, and just room in general, I think any actually business, where you can develop a culture where it's not just, A, I'm at work and I'm leaving, but, A, who are you personally in your life and your family, how those things going, is just, is going to pay off, you know, way more in the end, in terms of, you know, situations you guys go in, there's more of that care. And that's why it's really cool being here, part of the culture, because I felt that when I got here with Coach Flo and the whole organization. And that needs to go through my room for sure, and that will go through the team.